All right, everyone, check it out. So I got a, a nice and balanced breakfast this morning, <laughs> sarcastically saying, but we do have the 24 foot bay boat hooked up. I was waxing it all day yesterday. It's actually looking pretty good in my opinion. I gotta do the inside, but uh, that's for another time, but check it out. So we're gonna go after chase after some more big fish today. I have my fishing rods uh, over there somewhere. <laughs> there they are and tackle box, camera, snacks and y'all here to join me so that is awesome this is steven with bama saltwater i'll see you out on the water see all the boats launched it's still uh pretty dark out here <laughs> so i'm going to show you what i'm going to be using today so when we do get out there, we can go ahead and make a cast and make it count. This is a one ounce gator spoon. They're very high quality. They're made right here in the United States of America and they have great terminal tackle, strong hooks. They already come with a swivel on there. So I have one ounce tied on. One I'm running is about three feet of 50 pound fluorocarbon leader. And that's attached to my main line with a double uni knot. Now this is a Shimano Stratic 4000 with 20 pound braid fully spooled up and a seven foot St. Croix Avid inshore. This is the medium heavy power fast action model. All right, there's bait busting all over right there. All right, happy with that cast. I'm gonna let that spoon fall and then just kind of reel it up and then let it fall back down again. There's a mess of fish right here. <laughs> A mess of fish. <laughs> a bunch of bait. Oh, that was. Oh, well, we're hooked up now. We're hooked up now. I made a cast. Looked over to me. One busted there. My spoon just got hit. Heck yeah, dude. That's what I'm talking about. Already. Sun hasn't even come up yet. Oh, come here. Come on, buddy. Let's get after it. Let's see if we can bring the first big fish this morning in the boat. Oh, y'all, they're blowing up all around me. <laughs> I'm hoping they're redfish. The bull reds. That is incredible. Oh, how cool let's get them closer yeah that's a gorgeous redfish y'all wow that was a pretty red oh my goodness i see it on top that is a pumpkin colored redfish wow look at that oh my goodness you're beautiful look at you get a net on you that is one of the prettier redfish ever look at that sucker Oop. look at you man that this is always a challenge right here just trying to get it in the net oh, there you are Look at you, you big pumpkin. <laughs> that is gorgeous. Wow. <laughs> Love it. Y'all, if that ain't a pumpkin of a redfish, I don't know what else to tell you. Look how pretty she is. <laughs> On the spoon, first thing this morning. This is why I get up out here in fall early, come out here, because this is incredibly fun. Let's get her back and see if we can get on some more. What a start to a great day. So there are a lot of sharks out here. So what I like to do 
is jet them down just like that and she's swimming away i don't sit there and hold the tail and wait for them to swim jet them down get some oxygen through there because i'm not trying to get bit but that was incredibly fun on the one ounce gator spoon i always like to check my leader hook is good everything's good let's get after it again cast that spoon out letting it fall because most of the action comes on the fall looks like a dying bait fish and then reeling it up and then let it fall again by opening the bale you can jig it like that but a lot of times you'll get the hook wrapped around your leader and it fouls up all right some more bait busting see if we can get a cast out that'll do oh, fish on on the fall see what i mean <laughs> that spoon all that action pretty much comes when it's sinking very easy to work and versatile lure they've been around forever so we're hooked up again so what i like y'all this sucker's big that might be a jack or mile he ain't wanting to come in it's easy a lot of times the redfish you can turn their head fairly easy the jacks they uh they'll take you for a run for sure let's get you in man this is my gym right here <laughs> fighting these big jokers that is a gym oh come on heck yeah i love seeing this where everybody's hooking up there's so much life that is some fun stuff right there come on let me just see the color let me just see you taking me around yeah that's a jack <laughs> i just saw his big yellow tail good gracious get out from under there these jacks will wear you down they'll test everything you got i mean everything your endurance your rod your reel your line your hooks <laughs> you're a beast trust me i respect you for what you are oh there you are you giving up yet he's like no not yet Whew. come here come here oh. Dude. <laughs> i just want to get you in the net so i can get the hook out of you and get back after the reds <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. Almost head first. Get in. All right, we got them. <laughs> we got them. They're beast. Okay, there we go. Second fish of the day. This one wore me down versus the reds but that is a jack crevel such a beast time to let him go there you go and every time check that leader that is good they have some sharp tails so if their tail hits your line you can uh, possibly get shaped up we did good on that one that hook is still good it's crazy what a simple little one ounce bait just a piece of metal can do let's uh <laughs> let's go find them again now a little tip when you don't see birds like this or if you're not for sure where the drop off is or there's not bait if you have a garmin this is a this garmin was under a thousand bucks i've had them for years the same model it's like the 94 sd i believe 94 the eco map something like that it's the one that's like 900 bucks which is a lot of money but for what it does it's well worth it compared to what the other models are it has side scan and i have it set out to 100 feet so it's reading that way and that way 
a hundred feet from the side and you see it's showing a school of bait right there come down at about 65 feet to my right and a lot of times you can see the big schools of fish on there too they'll leave a shadow bridge pilings are really cool looking at but I like using that side scan when the fishing gets tough. But right now you can physically see the schools of bait, the schools of fish and cast at them. So, but just a little tip, see? Looks like a rock right there. We're gonna get back up on this tide line, try to find another one. Grab this spoon and make something happen. Oh, without hit, okay. I was about to say, without hitting any birds. Oh, look at that loaded down ship right there coming in Mobile Bay. Isn't that crazy how like a small state like Alabama has stuff coming from all over the world, like Egypt, Austria, Germany, Mexico. So cool, look at that joker. Loaded down with containers, pretty neat. So have that big ship coming in. Oh, and the dolphin are going crazy up on the bow of it. Oh, that's cool. Oh, all right. There we go again. <laughs> another fight on. <laughs> I should say another fish on, but this is a fight for sure. Oh man. What incredible fishing. World class type fishing right here. I mean, that's my opinion, but not too many places you can go and just really stack up like this in one spot. Certain times of year, it's incredible. Oh. Come here, you. And that current is really kicking because that ship is coming through the pass and displaces a lot of water along with a strong falling tide. It has really picked up. So I'm fighting against the current, fighting this fish. <laughs> what an awesome day. It might be, oh yeah, nice red. Really nice bull red. <laughs> look you come on y'all i hope you're having just as much fun as i am right now i'm glad that y'all can share this experience with me through these videos and hopefully you can get out here yourself and maybe take some uh, tips and tricks come out here and catch them Woo! they don't call them bull reds for nothing really a lot of resistance in that current <clears throat> i mean a lot of resistance into that current am i gonna be able to get you i think so oh look at that <laughs> i ain't gonna be able to pull it towards the boat Okay, got it. Oh, there we go. Barely got it, but I got him. Wow. Another big bull red. Ain't it crazy how their colors can be so different? Like that first one I caught was super pumpkin orange. This one's about your typical Gulf of Mexico, Mobile Bay colored redfish. How incredible. Let's let her go. Get her in, she gone. Like I said, you can sit there and hold the tail if we were in the bay, which are still sharks out there. But there are a lot of sharks that hang out in this turbulent water eating the same bait these fish are. So I'm not risking losing any of my appendages. And those fish are swimming off just fine. Now in the state of Alabama, you are allowed one overslot redfish. So I would be legally allowed to keep one of those fish if I wanted to. People eat them, I've eaten them before especially if I know that fish isn't gonna make it after the fight. I do like the slots better. They have to be 16 to 26 inches. You're allowed three a person, but those over slots, if you decide to keep one, counts 
one fish out of those three. So if you keep an over slot, you can't keep another one. And that's for the state of Alabama. <laughs> but y'all, this trolling motor's working overtime. I'm glad I charged it. But I guess we're gonna get another cast out. I need to check my spoon. We're still good. All righty. Thank you, Lord. What a blessing to be able to get out here and catch all these incredible fish. How awesome. And this old St. Croix and Stratix put in some work. Last time I was using some little bit heavier tackle, which is fun. But since these are mostly redfish, I really enjoy throwing it on something like this medium heavy. Makes it fun, but still allows for a healthy release. Here we go again. letting it fall oh must have fell right on top of their head i didn't even work that blue was about to say i'm letting it fall close the bell and reel in but that one landed right in the middle of the school apparently because i'm hooked up <laughs> this is so crazy how can you not enjoy something like this catching giants just one after another very high quality fish in terms of fight and make for a good picture and video too <laughs> you can show off to everybody and you can catch them right off the beach you can catch them from boat the pier kayak if you can't tell i'm pretty biased towards them i enjoy bull red fishing <sighs> now we gotta fight the red fish and that current I do want to show you though while I'm fighting this red, hopefully you can see it, but see all that on the side scan? They're on both sides of me, big schools. That's what I was talking about. When you can't see them busting, you can see them on your side scan, cast out to them and catch them. Which that one, I haven't even been looking at my fish finder much today. I've just been sight casting, but it kind of, other than me hooking into one, that kind of proves they're still there. They're just staying down close to the bottom. This is the hardest part, is pulling them against this very strong outgoing tide. It's another, wow, it's another redfish. This one looks a little bigger, but then again, they all are giants. Mm. Yes, look at you, man. Gotta love this type of fishing. Nothing but studs, all in artificial. Hooked right in the lower part of his lip. So that hook might pull, but we'll see. Did I get you? Oh, yep. <laughs> what a crazy net job. What a crazy net job with this current. Oh, yes, on the spoon again. I feel like I'm just showing the same fish over and over, but it just shows you how many of them there are here. That's a healthy joker, a little bit lighter colored. We're gonna get her back as well. Here we go. Woo, let's go look on the side scan, just out of curiosity, see if they're still right there. Okay, so see how there's not much? That might be some bait. But that school is right beside the boat. I guess I'm going to cast back out into them. Oh, oh. okay. That came back for it. Came back for it. Mm. Yes. Gotta love when they pull drag. <laughs> He had smacked it, so I threw it back out, let it sink again, and he came right back forward. Wow, he's right here at the boat now. I guess he's realized he's just now hooked. Or he might have saw my face and was like, ugh. <laughs> I don't want to come on the boat with him. Okay. Ugh. That's why I like braided line too, because you can feel everything. It has small diameter per the, compared to the strength. So you can really load up a small reel 
with some heavy line like this 20 pound and get after it. Oh, he's gonna take off. Oh, he's right there behind me. Let me lay eyes on you. Pretty sure you're a redfish again. This school of fish is, I mean, gigantic. Like you're talking about, we're talking about hundreds of giant, about 25 to 35 pound redfish mixed with some jack cravals. But this redfish school is huge. Okay. I'll try to land you it's right here. Let's go ahead and get them in the net. You always want to try to get them head first in the net. If you get them by the tail, they're going to come out pretty easy. There you are. Mm. Once again, another big one. Look at the size of that beast right there. <laughs> How incredible. Beautiful colors on them on these big bull reds. <sighs> she gone. It's like every cast, y'all. I mean, there's not much cutting and editing on this video. Sometimes it takes days just to compile some footage up because the fishing's real slow. But this is literally every cast. I kind of want to get back after it again, but I do want to go pull some spoons offshore on some of their rigs while I'm here. I'll make a couple more casts and see what happens. I know this. <laughs> This lure is really holding up strong. I haven't changed it. I haven't had a retie. The hooks that they use are awesome. And I'm not sponsored by them or nothing. I just kind of like using some quality products. And these are made in the US. But really any piece of metal that's shiny works pretty well. So I left the shipping channel and came out to one of these gas platforms. There's numerous out here you can still see the beach so we're not too far out and i'm going to be trolling a planer all this allows you to do is to get down deeper about 20 feet or so this is a number two or size two planer now i have a ball bearing snap swivel attach it to the ring on the planer and that's what's going to my fishing rod and then normally i like to use another ball bearing snap swivel here but i've just tied a knot because i didn't bring any more snap swivels but i've attached about eight feet a 50 pound monofilament leader coming to a size 200 gator king spoon but this is one of their trolling spoons a little bit different than the casting ones there's a lot of different ways you can do this but this is one of the more simpler ways with just a little bit of gear now since planers do have a lot of resistance down in the water because they act like the bill of a crankbait or a diving lure there's a lot of resistance so i like pulling them on something a little heavier this is a six and a half foot conventional fishing rod a shimano speedmaster 12-2 now I have put 50 pound monofilament top shot, but a lot of times I like to go straight braid. But as my backing, I have 50 pound braided line. We're gonna get this out and troll it around three to four miles an hour and see what we can catch. But we're gonna let this planer out, see how it's already diving down. I'm gonna let it out about 50 or so meters behind the boat. It doesn't have to be super far. And it's set in the rod holder and we're good to go. There's a supply vessel, the Gold Angel that one a lot out here we're just trolling right along hey y'all so that planer just went slack and we have a fish on so anytime you see your planer go slack or your rod go slack that means you need to check it and there is our first fish on the planer rod today oh yeah nice spanish mackerel check him out so we're gonna let him go but that is an awesome spanish mackerel there you go, bud. Planer's out again. Now, I didn't hear the clicker because that fish wasn't big enough to really take a lot of line. So you do want to be pretty proactive and stare at your rod tip every now and then. And if it goes slack or if it starts bouncing, that means you have something on. We'll do that again. Planer just tripped again. That's the only thing about Spanish on planers is they don't fight very hard because you're pulling them on heavy stuff. But that's another nice Spanish mackerel. Let the planer rod back out again. All right. Good to go. Something just hit our planer. Again. Got it that time. All right, let's see what you are. All right, I haven't seen color yet. Oh man, that's a nice Spanish. I mean, a really nice one. Yeah, gum. You 
you know what i think i might keep him for some ceviche i'm gonna put him in my live well and haul butt back to the boat ramp because it's kind of hard to turn back a delicious fish like that it's incredible eating i thought it was a small king at first but it's see that dorsal fin that's a telltale sign and that's a spanish mackerel so i'm gonna put him in here and haul butt back and get some ice hey so i'm back home and rushed home to get this spanish mackerel out here because that's such a pretty fish look at that that's a good one. How can you throw something like that back? So we're going to clean him up and make some fresh ceviche. So there's our Spanish mackerel. I thought it was a king at first because it's colors, but see that dorsal fin real black right there with that white? That is a great identifier for Spanish mackerel. So we're just going to fillet these. They're extremely easy to fillet. I am going to take this sword 7 inch. It's a flex fillet. Make a slice behind their pectoral fin, and we're going to run up this all the way to the back, just like that, and then flay it off the bone. Spanish mackerel are actually pretty good to eat, and they're full of great, healthy fish oils. They are a little bit better, in my opinion, than king mackerel. I like, I thoroughly enjoy eating these when fresh. Spanish are one of the easiest fish to clean, too. So there's our filet. And what I'm going to do is take the skin off of it. And I kind of leave a little bit of tag in attached to the body, and it gives you kind of a handle. Boom. There's our filleted Spanish mackerel. Don't feel bad if you left a little bit of skin. We'll clean up that bloodline as well inside before we make our ceviche. And there's pin bones in there, but we'll do all that inside. Right now we're just separating the filet from the fish. So that's a nice slab of a Spanish right there. That came from a Spanish mackerel. That is a slab of some meat. So we'll take these up, dry them, put them in the bag, and get ready to prep our ingredients for our fresh Lunch is going to be fresh Spanish mackerel ceviche. So we'll see you in the kitchen. Y'all, we're in the kitchen now, and I have prepped pretty much all our ingredients for our fresh ceviche. This is a Spanish mackerel fillets, and what I've done is removed all the red meat, the skin, and the bones. This is a boneless fillet. Look how pretty those are. And we're going to be using all these. So I have a bowl, and what I need to do first is cut these Spanish mackerel pieces up into small cubes. So we're going to do that. I like to square them off. And this is all personal preference. Each ingredient that I'm using and size of fish and preparation, it's kind of hard to mess up. So everybody has different taste buds. So if you see something you don't like when it comes to ceviche or when it comes to like the ingredients there, you don't have to use it. I'm going to cut this fish into small squares so about like that and get it in our bowl let me do each one of these and we should have a bowl full of fish so i was able to prep that fish up cut it up into small bite-sized cubes about one and a half pounds worth of fillets if you were to buy some but i like making this out of extremely fresh fish this fish was just swimming this morning and immediately cleaned once we got home and now it's ready now we're about to make the ceviche so I do have a chopped tomato, chopped red onion, some garlic, and these are all fresh ingredients. Serrano chili peppers, because I've made ceviche before and I completely forgot to put the chili peppers in there. And then I have cilantro, salt, pepper, and then to change it up a little bit, usually you can do lime or you can do some lemons. I have half a full size orange and then one whole lemon. And this acidity, inside this citrus here like the lemon the lime or the orange or all three or in this case these two is actually what cooks this fish it marinates it and it i guess the word isn't cook but it toughens it up and doesn't make it taste like you're eating sushi or really raw fish 
So ceviche is very good. If you've had it before, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, it's worth trying. Now we're gonna serve these on some tostada rounds, but that's gonna be in a while. First things first, we need to season salt and some freshly cracked black pepper. And now everything is gonna be proportioned. So this is a whole tomato I've chopped up. And I'm gonna put pretty much the whole tomato in there because this is a lot of fish. But if you don't have that much fish, you don't want one ingredient to overpower the other. And then our onion. That is half of a red onion. And then uh, I left a little bit in the bowl. Here's our garlic, just finely chopped garlic. I'm gonna give it some nice flavor. Our serrano chilies is gonna give it a nice kick and a very light flavor as well. I'm gonna do the whole thing there because that's gonna be good. I like a little bit of spice. Here's our cilantro. Just a hair of that. I know some of y'all don't like cilantro. Like I said earlier, everyone's different. And so if you don't like one ingredient or the other, you don't have to use it. Let's mix this up. And then we have to add our citrus. Looks nice in proportion to me. We can add a little bit more cilantro. There we go. Oh yeah. See, that's like a nice salsa. Time to add our citrus. If you don't want to use an orange or if you don't have an orange, you can do one and a half lemons. That's one whole lemon and then another half. But in this case, I have half an orange and a whole lemon. Man, that orange is nice and juicy. Look at that. That is a fresh orange. I ate the other half <laughs> and it was very good. And we get all that juice and there's no seeds not one seed in this orange which is nice now our lemons i want to make sure see there's a seed we can get some of those out if you have a lemon squeezer you can use that too the other half of the lemon nice juicy citrus here that's what you want so we have done our citrus and that is literally it. Well, you wanna mix it thoroughly. Make sure every bit of this ceviche is coated and then it's gonna go in the fridge and actually marinate, toughen up. You'll see the meat start to turn white versus right now it's raw. It'll still be raw in a sense, but it's gonna be a different texture, a different flavor. So that ceviche is prepped and ready to marinate in the fridge for one hour covered. I'm going to cover this saran wrap and we'll see you back in one hour. But look at all that fresh ingredients. Heck yeah. Y'all, it's been exactly one hour and we have pulled out our ceviche from the fridge. Let's unravel it or unwrap it. Oh yeah, look at that. Heck yeah. I'm going to give it some more mix. So this is extremely fresh. I'm going to give it a try real quick. Here we go. Mm. Man. So that ceviche tasted extremely well. Now we have some fresh tostadas laid out. Gives it a nice crunch and a really pretty presentation. And let's go ahead and plate this ceviche. Scoop on each one. And this is great for if you get back fishing at the end of the day and you want something quick but very fresh and tasting and light for everybody and all your friends, this is an amazing dish. I know some people may be turned off by the fact it was raw. You have to try it at least once to say that you've tried ceviche and you'll, you'll probably will try it again because it's very delicious, very light. There's our plated up ceviche on tostadas with fresh fish. We know exactly where it came from, what species of fish and how it's handled. That is amazing. Let's go outside with some of our jarritos. A mandarin soda, kind of like Fanta, which I think is very suiting for this dish. So. Mm. Oh yeah, that was good. All right, y'all, we're gonna go outside and give this a try. Let's go. I actually like ceviche, but here we go. Let's try some on the tostada. Mm. That goes perfect together. I mean, it's light, refreshing, and if I hadn't said it before, it's fresh. Mm-hmm. 
tostada gives it a nice crunch and a little bit of saltiness. It's pretty much like eating a nice homemade salsa with that, with that fresh fish and all the vitamins and the oils and all that from there. You'll have to try that on your own. It's very simple to make. You don't even cook anything. You just, you just put it together, throw it in the fridge. So I'm going to keep on taking some bites, but I hope you enjoyed this video. That's good. That was awesome me. I'm gonna get out there and catch those giant fish and then also come home with dinner. Incredibly fun, great time of year to fish. I hope y'all can get out there and do it as well. If you enjoyed these video series, these catching cooks and, and just getting out on the water with me, go smash that subscribe button if you haven't yet. It's fun to watch the channel grow and share these experiences with everyone. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. As always, and most importantly, I wanna thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. And we'll see you later. I'm gonna have to take another bite. That was good. Mm. <laughs> Got a messy bite on that one. Mm. Yo, we're gone.